The dinosaur has supposedly lived in a period of time paleontologists and geologists call the Middle Jurassic, about 175 to 160 million years before our time. What Earth looked like at this time, and also what the skin of the dinosaurs was like and which color they had, is only known of a few species. For example, the Hadrosaurus. For many others, it is still an undisclosed mystery, just as well as the daily life and the behavior of many dinosaurs. It is assumed that plant-eating dinosaurs had lived together with raptors or predatory dinosaurs, but it has never been proved. Maybe the findings and the results of the German expedition from Braunschweig could give new hints and even evidence on this question. This dinosaur is called Suchomimus tenerensis. It lived in the same area as the sauropod that the Braunschweig team found only tens of millions of years later in the Lower Cretaceous, about 145 to 100 million years before our time. Thucomimus had been discovered in 1995 by Paul Serino, a well-known American paleontologist. Serino completed the skeleton through bones he found in other excavations. Sucomimos means crocodile imitator. It got this name because of its skull, that looks very much like the one of a croc. Sucomimos tenrensis, the second part of the name tenrensis, comes from the place where it was found. In the Tener Desert, which is a part of the Sahara, which had not always been a desert. When the flesh-eating crocodile imitator lived here, it was most supposedly feeding from fish from nearby rivers. Beginning of March 2007. Professor Yoga has done a good job. From several sources, he has raised the money to start a new, big expedition. These plastic chests are quite big ones, about one meter long. Can be used as benches as well, really useful. They are disassembled for now. Think about it if you might need them. Dave is new to the team. He will be driving the old red Magiros, a former fire engine. A whole lot of important equipment and other stuff needs to be tucked away. The whole expedition is going to last over six weeks. Mario is going to drive the other truck, a MAM. He is putting one of the plastic chest kits back into Dave's truck so he has at least some space left in his truck. Shovels belong to the most important pieces of equipment. You can imagine why taking two heavily loaded trucks over sand roads. And you need paperwork for such a trip as sheer infinite number of permissions and certificates. The technical test was not a problem, but now the truck is a certified motorhome, that's really good for us. Now I'm changing the bulbs from the certified ones to the not certified but at least bright ones. Well, the typical things you have to do after the official technical test. There's another shower, a solar shower. We don't have enough water for that, do we? No. What about the water at the site? Oh, there's plenty of water, there's a well nearby. We just have to have a long rope to pull it out of the ground. All equipment and hardware is checked the final time. In the desert, there is no replacement, no spare parts, and therefore very small chances to repair anything. Now there's excitement, but I wouldn't call it tension. It's positive. Everybody's in a good mood. That's a very good start. I hope nothing is going to break, and if, I hope I took all the necessary things to fix it. Then they set off on a long, long journey. 
The original plan to drive to Marseille, take the ferry and travel through Algeria had to be skipped on short notice. The German embassy that had promised to organize a permission to drive through Algeria changed their mind and said they couldn't help because the Algerian administration prohibited the passage through the south of the country. They feared danger for the Europeans from bandits or insurgents, they said. That's why they have to take a small diversion, about 4,000 kilometers. From Braunschweig, in the north of Germany, to Algeciras, near Gibraltar, and then via Tanga, Morocco, West Sahara, and through Mauritania. And finally, they pass Mali to get to Niger. Always trying to leave out the most dangerous areas, about 10,000 kilometers in total. Ten thousand kilometers is a long, a very long distance. In Spain, the trucks had been stopped by the police, exceeding of allowed driving time. After some discussion, the Spanish-speaking Edgar Zomme is able to convince the Spanish police that the truck is certified as a motorhome, and thus he saves them from about four thousand euros of fine. The Spaniards let them go because motorhomes are not subject to the strict driving time regulations of professional truck drivers. On a journey so long, it's sure something is going to break. But Mario and Dave are equipped. Some metal things tore apart, they have to be welded. Yeah, the tank supports yanked off. We got them welded and now we are putting everything back together and we hope they will last. Cross country they go through impressing landscapes and through the sand as well, where it can always be dangerous. This time they manage to get through because Dave lets the Magiras roll backwards down the dune. Then he takes a different path to get the heavy truck safely over a firmer part of the sand dune. Still, getting stuck in the sand is inevitable. That means shoveling. The professor took the plane to Malaga, Spain, to meet the team because he had to get important stamps and visa. At some point, the gravel and dirt roads were going to ask for their tribute, the first tire failure. The fabric of the tire is broken, that's why we are putting on the spare tire. The first one, knock on wood. Some locals come looking if they can help. The kids are watching curiously. Jetzt müssen wir weiter. Ist gut? Ja. 
Ja, das rum. Ja. Gut, du musst hier hoch. Ja, ich will aber lieber drücken. Dogon land in Mali is a special attraction. The scenery looks like in a fairy tale or like in a Hollywood movie. When they arrive at the excavation site where they had left their dinosaur the year before, they can't believe what they see. There's just a huge hole left where there once was the dinosaur. The feeling to see this empty pit was quite horrible. We have imagined many things that could happen to us, but not that the complete dinosaur could be gone. I think that some people took it who wanted to do some kind of deal with us, some trade or to get money or aid goods or something. It was a severe shock. I didn't sleep for two nights. I dodged around the whole night because the skeleton was the reason for us to undertake this big expedition and it already had cost us a lot of time and money. And now it seemed like it all had been in vain. Luckily we heard that it obviously had been excavated by professionals. And on top of that, the team found another specimen of the same kind, just meters away. That shit is up again. Das hat uns dann wieder Auftrieb gegeben. Adjacent to the first site, just a few meters away, they discover another dinosaur skeleton. Unbelievable luck. Sure, it happens that researchers find several dinosaurs at the same spot, but the new skeleton seems to belong to the same species, which not even the experts can identify at this time. At this time, the excavation team is not sure which kind of dinosaur they had found. A Jobaria, maybe, or a Hadrosaur? They have to dig out more bones in order to find out. From this specimen, we have found parts of the skull, parts of the jaws with some teeth. Most interesting is that they do not look like the teeth of a long-necked Jobaria, but more like the teeth of a Hadrosaur because they have several cusps, about five to seven cusps or denticles. And what we had thought were teeth with the animal lost from the other, the stolen specimen, we now believe to be tooth roots that were in a very bad condition. And now we have found many teeth that are in a very good state and larger fragments of the jaw. A hut is indispensable here. The helpers that came along from Agadez to help digging build a hut in the traditional way with a few thin logs and some cord. They had to bring the wood from Agadez because it's hard to find here in the desert. With some weeks of excavations ahead, the Europeans are going to need some shelter from the sun. And with a local technique, they build an open shack that lets a lot of wind through. Very necessary, especially to make them able to cope with the hot midday hours with temperatures well over 40 degrees centigrade in the shade. <laughs> 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 
The extrication team is getting on well. They uncover more and more parts of the skeleton. The dinosaurier was in weichen Schlamm eingebettet, damals kurz nach seinem Ableben. The dinosaur was embedded in mud after he died. What was mud then petrified over millions of years. It turned to stone. So now we have a very hard sedimentary rock here, the so-called silt stone. That is making our work quite hard because the silt is not easily taken off the bones. 